It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Wednesday, December 21st edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. Hopefully, everybody's having a good week thus far. Uh, this is the Wednesday, December 21st show, our bowl preview number two, uh, bowl analysis, bowl breakdown, bowl against the spread picks, if you will. Uh, go ahead and tell you. Uh, our best bets will be found over on the Bet US College Football Show. I'm going to give you a pick for every single game. That's right, every single bowl game. Uh, I'm having to record these a little bit early. We're going to be doing some traveling this week, etc. So I'm going to give you the line where it is currently, tell you my pick against that, uh, tell you what my numbers say, etc. Obviously, you guys know how this works. If you've watched this show, you know what's going on. But uh, but yes, before we begin, let me go on and tell you, the show is brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sportsbook. You can find more over at BetUS.com. It is, uh, it is where the game begins. There's a link in the description below, and you will get a $50 free play, no deposit required. All you got to do is sign up at that link. So I highly, highly recommend that you go ahead and do that. Go check out BetUS uh, at the link, at the link in the description. Along with that, make sure that you are subscribed to this show along with the BetUS College Football Show. I host that every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a link in the description for that as well. So make sure that you are subscribed and that you like the shows over there. Uh, but this one here at Winning Cures Everything, go ahead and like this one as well. Um, yes, I think we're good. I think we're good on the notes. Let's go on and dive into this. Uh, my season record thus far, uh, at least regular season, 89-77. and 77. So... Not great, but again, I'm giving out a pick on basically every game. Uh, during during bowl season, it's every bowl. During the regular season, it's all the games that we did not discuss on the Bet U.S. College Football Show. So uh, let's start up some music, and uh, and then we will we will begin. Yeah, I think this should be good right there. All right, let's fire in the Armed Forces Bowl. That would be Baylor against Air Force. Air Force is a four-point underdog. Currently, the total sits at 44. It's on Thursday, December 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Of course, an ESPN game. And let's uh, let's pull it up on the screen. Let's see what we got going on here. My numbers have Baylor by 6.94. I'm not buying into that uh, at all. I, I think Air Force pretty good against the run. But let's let's dive through some of these numbers here. Uh, I, PPA margin: Air Force is number twenty, Baylor number eighty-nine. Uh, Baylor's offense is number forty-four in offensive PPA per drive. Well, Air Force's defense is number twenty. Baylor, the issue here isn't so much their offense; the issue is their defense. Uh, if you look at their rushing statistics they're number 116 in ppa per rush since week eight that's what these numbers are from by the way they are uh from week eight of the season on through the end and they're number 116 in ppa per rush they are number 122 in rushing success rate allowed well obviously you know what air force does air force is fantastic at this the air force number one in stuff rate allowed uh, baylor's defense number 112 in stuff rate like uh, baylor cannot stop the run period so and so that's what the biggest concern that I've got is Baylor's offense may not get on the field very much. And if that's the case, I, that could certainly be an issue. You look at something as simple as turnover margin. Uh, let's look at like giveaways per game. Like that's a, that's a major one. Turn, turnovers uh, or giveaways per game here. Number 82 for Baylor and number 15 for Air Force. Air Force does not turn the ball over. And Baylor does. That's going to be a concern. You give Air Force more opportunities with the ball, they are not going to let you have it. And so and let's let's look at plays per game. Neither one of these runs a whole lot anyway. Baylor's number 86, Air Force number 108. So we're not looking at a ton of points. Uh, as a matter of fact, again, the total on this was 44. Well, my projected total is 37 or 37 and a half. Uh, certainly, certainly not great. 
Now, you look at uh, Air Force's defense, they're, uh, they're significantly better against the pass than they are against the run. Well, Baylor's going to do their best to run the ball as well. Uh, but the question, of course, comes into, you know, is Baylor going to try and run it between the tackles? Or are they going to try and get to the edge? Because the, the majority of the season, their speed has certainly been um, a, a good thing. They, they've been able to uh, use their speed to get to the edge in a lot of runs, etc. They're probably going to do that again here. Um, but it looks like Air Force's defense is actually pretty good at stopping that. The issue that you run into is Baylor, number 32 in strength of schedule. Uh, Air Force is number 130 in strength of schedule. And while... While this number at Baylor minus seven or minus six point nine four is uh, opponent adjusted, I don't know if you can really adjust that far. Uh, I do still think that Air Force tends to be up more for these games. Um, Ron Roberts, the defensive coordinator at Baylor, was obviously fired at the end of the season, so Dave Aranda is going to be calling this game himself. That's interesting. I I think there's too many things that point towards Air Force here. Give me the Falcons plus the four on that. I I think that Air Force wants to show up for these games. They want to get to a 10th win this season. Uh, I don't know what Baylor's really playing for here. Uh, having to play in TCU Stadium, etc. Not great. Not great. Independence Bowl, Louisiana against Houston. Houston, a seven-point favorite. The total sits at 58 on this one. It's Friday, December 23rd. 2 p.m. Central Time. Of course, that is the latest line at BetUS. Let's go on and pull this thing up on the screen and show you what I got here. Oh, that didn't work out well. There we go. <laughs> okay, so my number from week eight of the season on has Houston favored by 15 on this. And it certainly has nothing to do with their defense. Uh, Houston's defense is pretty putrid. Uh, when you really, when you really look at it, uh, their defense is just bleh, not good, not good. Uh, number one twenty-two defensive PPA per drive, uh, but their offense is number two in the country PPA per drive. That's where you get a huge advantage because this Louisiana defense, number eighty-eight PPA per drive since week eight of the season. Uh, that's what we're that's what we're pointing at here, is just how crazy this really is so uh, louisiana has not been good for the majority of uh, of the season especially late right so their offense really good at running the ball that happens to be the strength of the houston defense uh their number 57 ppa per rush houston's defenses well louisiana's offense number 42 ppa per rush number 20 in rushing success rate well houston's defense is number 27 in that spot so what louisiana does best on offense at least late in the season happens to be what Houston defends best. And on the other side, Houston is apparently doing everything well right now, if you look at it. Number one, PPA per pass. Number seven, PPA per rush. Even though they're only running the ball 34% of the time, they are throwing the ball 64% of the time. And, uh, and they're number one in PPA per pass, number two in passing success rate. So Louisiana's defense, number 67 PPA per pass. Uh, Louisiana's defense, number 105 PPA per rush. You, neither team very good at penalties per game. The issue that you run into is turnover margin. Louisiana, number 31, and Houston, number 114. So if, if Houston is to not cover the seven points here, it would probably be because they are giving the ball away. Uh, pay attention to the quarterback situation for... Louisiana, uh, because Ben Woolbridge is out for this game. Uh, Chandler Fields, I believe, is the... Or is it Chandler Rogers? Ah, somebody correct me. I didn't put it on my notes. Uh, regardless, Chandler <laughs> is going to be playing quarterback, and he is not. He has not shown to be nearly as good as Ben was. So that's going to be a bit of an issue as well. Uh, you look at success rates, you look at everything else, the biggest difference in this game is Houston, number three offensive success rate against Louisiana's number 59 defensive success rate. On the other side, Houston's defense, number 78 defensive success rate, and Louisiana, fit number 53 offensive success rate. I'm going to go with Houston 
and assume that they are motivated and that they want to be here. So it, that's that's the way that I'm going to look at it, is that they actually want to be here. And if they are, they are incredibly more talented. Uh, look for a lot of tune to uh, to tank Dell because Dell is going to play in this game. So, but give me give me Houston minus the seven on that one. Um, we'll move along. The Gasparilla Bowl, Wake Forest in Missouri. Missouri is a one point underdog. The total sits at 59 and a half over at BetUS. It's a Friday, December 23rd game at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. And this is another one that, let's go on and pull up the uh, the numbers here for you. Uh, Wake Forest, since week eight of the season, would be favored by 3.46 to me. Now, it, there's several guys opting out, etc. It doesn't look like... Um, I don't know. It, it's it doesn't look like anybody of real substance is going to sit out this game. I think Sam Hartman's going to play. I think those wide receivers are going to play. Um, I, that's at least that's what I'm. It's from from the information that I've got. That's that's what I'm hearing. Uh, and if those two or if those guys are going to play, well, then I'm going to have to go with Wake Forest here. I know that they weren't great towards the end of the season, but you look at this, I think there's a distinct advantage for this Wake Forest passing offense against Missouri's defense. Um, Wake Forest offense, number 29, PPA per drive. At the Missouri defense over the last you know six weeks of the season, number 50. They were significantly better earlier in the year. Uh, the issue is this Wake Forest defense late in the year. And the Missouri offense certainly has gotten better. Number 18 PPA per pass, number 23 passing success rate. That happens to be the weakness of this Wake Forest defense. But they're only throwing the ball like 43, 44% of the time. So definitely something to pay attention to. They they can't really run it all that well. Um, Wake Forest a little bit better at stopping the run. So that's one thing. You look at penalties per game, Missouri number 117 and Wake Forest number 14. Turnover margin, both are pretty terrible. Uh, Sam Hartman got a got a case of the the picks late in the year. Uh, Missouri is number 88 in turnover margin. Wake Forest number 91. So no real advantage either way there. You look at net points per drive. That's the the biggest difference here. The biggest indicator to me. Wake Forest is number 34 there, uh, and this is for the whole season. Number 34 and Missouri number 64. Um, it, a big difference in place per game. You know all all kinds of things. So, you know, uh, strength of schedule certainly favors Missouri, uh, but team strength favors Wake Forest. I'm going to roll with Sam Hartman. I trust him to be able to get a, uh, a win here. So go ahead and give me Wake Forest to cover that one. I know that line has come down, uh, but I just trust them more. I trust Dave Clawson. Uh, I think all the, all the stuff that was going on where Sam Hartman might sit out because he might transfer or might go to the NFL, all that's been cleared away. Dave Clawson is not leaving for another job. That's been cleared away. I think these guys want to come out and get a good win here. So I will take Wake Forest minus the one. We're moving to Christmas Eve. And we got Middle Tennessee against San Diego State in the Hawaii Bowl. Uh, San Diego State, a seven-point favorite. The total sits at 49 and a half. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. Saturday, December 24th at 7 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone. And we'll go on and pull that one up on your screen as well. And I've got Middle Tennessee favored in this game. Since week eight of the season, and obviously strength of schedule plays into this, Middle Tennessee number 121 at San Diego State number 81. PPA margin, San Diego State is number 11, Middle Tennessee number 21. So two of the better performing teams towards the end of the season. Uh, Middle Tennessee won four of their last five games. They have looked really good. And the biggest point on that is they are number 22 in offensive success rate, number 34 in offensive PPA per drive. But the Middle Tennessee defense has been pretty good as well. Number 28 defensive PPA per drive. Um, now, San Diego State, Brady Hoke and that bunch, they, they are very familiar with playing at Hawaii. I, I get that. Uh, number nine, defensive PPA per drive. But that offense, eh, cons 
I mean, consistently inconsistent, right? Isn't that the biggest? Isn't that the biggest difference? Uh, they are number 46 in offensive PPA per drive. They are number 52 in offensive success rate. So you start looking at available yards margin, etc. It does not. It does not go well for <laughs> for San Diego State because they are number 115 on offense they get uh they only get 37 percent of the available yards in a game on average i mean that is just that is brutal absolutely brutal and so uh looking at some of these other numbers as far as the middle tennessee offense is concerned number 33 ppa per pass uh versus number 45 for san diego state's defense number five in passing success rate san diego state's defense number 65 so they'll be able to move it down the field. Standard downs PPA, standard down success. Uh, Middle Tennessee, not nearly as good on offense as San Diego State is on defense. But when you continue to hammer away at them, I, I think that there's a way that they can take advantage of San Diego State's defense. Uh, San Diego State being favored by a lot of points has never really worked out well for them this season. I think they're 2-4 and four against the spread as a, as a favorite. Um, so not, not great. Not great by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Middle Tennessee is set number 75, uh, but they get 7.40 per game over the last six weeks of the season. Uh, so the more chances that they get down there, uh, I would imagine they'll be able to score more. I I don't think this is going to be a super high scoring game. I know that this total is 49 and a half. I've got it at 46. Uh, I'm going to go Middle Tennessee. I mean, my numbers have them actually favored in the game. I, I I expect low scoring, and I maybe a field goal, maybe a twenty-one to seventeen kind of game somewhere around there. And it wouldn't shock me if Rick Stockstill's bunch finds a way to win this game. They, they did it last year in the Bahamas Bowl as a, a double-digit underdog came out and beat Toledo outright. Now San Diego State is not exactly Toledo. Don't get me wrong, but it there you go. There you go. All right. On the other side, we're going to hit the Quick Lane Bowl, uh, New Mexico State and Bowling Green. We'll have uh, the First Responder Bowl. We'll have the Birmingham Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. But let's, uh, let's go and hit this first. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. Let's dive back into the tunes. And we're headed to the Quick Lane Bowl. Ah, no, no, no. Before we do that, Val to Mary Surf Company. They have an awesome, awesome, awesome line of collegiate town apparel. Go ahead and check them out. ValtimarySurfCo.com. You can use the promo code Gary10 to get 10% off your order. There's a link in the description. Go ahead and click that link. That'll help you out. Along with that, of course, Flow Sports. They help bring you the show each and every time out. Flow Sports is fantastic. They got 25,000 different sporting matches on there. They got boxing. They got MMA. They got D3 football. They got uh, basketball. They got, I mean, just everything that you could think of. It's all over there at Flow Sports. Go ahead and check them out. And there's a link in the description for that one as well. Now, the Quick Lane Bowl. New Mexico State against Bowling Green. Bowling Green favored by three and a half. Total sits at 67. It's on Monday, December 26th. 1.30 p.m. Central Time is the kick for this game. So the day after Christmas is what we're looking at here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull it up on your screen so you can see the stats. 
Bowling Green is favored by three and a half. I have New Mexico State favored by 4.85. New Mexico State was significantly better down the stretch of the season. Just, I mean, not even, not even close. Like how much better they were. I think they went four and one straight up down the stretch. It might, might have gone five and two. Uh, they, no, six and two. They were six and two in their last eight. They have been really good under Jerry Kill. Like just, just bottom line. Uh, I think it's a coaching, uh, excuse me, a coaching mismatch between Jerry Kill and Scott Loeffler, or Leffler, or however you say it. But regardless, PPA margin number five for New Mexico State since week eight. Number thirty-eight for Bowling Green. Um, Bowling Green, it's it's more about their defense than their offense. Their offense, number 69 PPA per drive since week eight, number 104 in offensive success rate. You look at the defense, though, and Bowling Green, number 37 PPA per drive on defense, number 45 defensive success rate there. So that is certainly something to uh, pay attention to, something to look at here. Um, you look over at New Mexico State, number 57 offensive success rate, number 42 defensive success rate. Uh, they're awesome. They're really good, like especially down the stretch of the season. So let's look at that offense. Number six, PPA per pass. Number 25, passing success rate on offense for New Mexico State. Uh, well, that's a place that Bowling Green uh, is going to have a problem with. Uh, they're number 84, PPA per pass on defense. Number 58, PPA per pass on, or excuse me, not PPA, uh, number 58 in passing success rate allowed. Um, they're not great at Havoc. And, and that's one thing that they could have taken advantage of with uh, with New Mexico State, although New Mexico State has gotten better uh, throughout the season here. So uh, average field position uh, looks like it actually favors New Mexico State pretty regularly. That's a, that's a big deal. Points per scoring opportunity favors New Mexico State. They're number three in the country in points per scoring opportunity. When they get down there, they score touchdowns, period. Um, Bowling Green is going to have problems with this offense, I think. Now, looking at Bowling Green's offense, number 38 PPA per pass, but they're number 86 in passing success rate. So they can hit some plays, but they are not great at being efficient on offense. They're number 114 PPA per rush, number 124 in rushing success rate. So that's not going to go well at all. Uh, and Bowling Green's offense is number 113 in points per scoring opportunity. They can't finish drives. So that's definitely not a good thing. Uh, they're number 112 in offensive red zone conversion percentage, number 63 in defensive red zone conversion percentage uh, for New Mexico State. New Mexico State's offense, number 53. Uh, they were number nine in the country in offensive red zone touchdown rate. They get down there, they're going to score, period. I like this matchup for Jerry Kill. I like, uh, I like New Mexico State here. I think they're going to win the game outright. So give me uh, New Mexico State. I will, um, yeah. And that's that's the way that I'm going to go here. Give me New Mexico State plus the three and a half. Of course, uh, you can find my best bets over on the BetUS College Football Show. Uh, make sure and check out those from this week. Now, we'll move ahead to the Camellia Bowl. And the Camellia Bowl, let me write down the times here. The Camellia Bowl is Georgia Southern and Buffalo. Buffalo is a three and a half point underdog. The total sits at 67 over at BetUS. This one's on Tuesday, December 27th at 11 a.m. Central Time. Now, this is a very interesting ball game to me because Buffalo played horrid towards the end of the season. They were 0-4 against the number uh, towards the end of the year. It took them four tries to get their sixth win to get to a bowl game. And... We're just going to pull up the numbers here so that you can see exactly what we're looking at. Even with all of that, from week eight on, Georgia Southern has not exactly been much better either. PPA margin, Buffalo number 111, Georgia Southern number 79. I've got Georgia Southern favored by 2.88 here. These look like two pretty evenly matched teams, but at the same time, I, I don't feel great about either of them. Really. Uh, and I don't know why anybody else would either. I mean, it's nuts. The the one thing that Buffalo does really well on defense is stop the pass. They're number 28 in PPA per pass. Now, they are number 84 in passing success rate allowed, but regardless, uh, Buffalo number one in havoc rate since week eight. Uh, Georgia Southern's number 44. Georgia Southern throws the ball six, over 60% of the time. 
which is just nuts because they're actually better at running the ball than they are at throwing it. And yet they they do it at a 60-40 clip. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, if they were to change the way that they play, change their offensive philosophy just a little bit and run the ball, uh, get this thing closer to 50-50, at Buffalo's number 124 in PPA per rush on defense. And Georgia Southern's number 46 there. Uh, Georgia Southern number 18 in rushing success rate, even though they only run the ball like 39% of the time, we'll say. So, yeah. Field position, certainly uh, a big coup for uh, for Georgia Southern here. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Buffalo, like if I'm not mistaken, they got two running backs that uh, that could be out for this game. That is a that's a big miss because that's the one thing that Georgia Southern does not defend very well at all. Georgia Southern can pass the ball or can uh, can defend the pass. They're number 37 PPA per pass uh, allowed, at number 42 passing success rate allowed. Well, as far as running the ball goes, Georgia Southern's defense number 122 PPA per rush since week eight, number 114 rushing success rate allowed. They're number 130 in offensive line yards. They're number 101 in stuff rate. Like they, they cannot stop the run. They aren't built for it. So this would be where Buffalo would take over, except that it looks like they got two guys out. So we'll see what they end up doing there. Um, I don't like... I don't like this game. I don't like uh, <laughs> don't like having to make a pick here. If I had to go a certain way, because Buffalo is not going to be able to take advantage of that rushing defense, at least I don't think they are, I think Cal Van Trees is going to come out fired up here. Obviously, he transferred from Buffalo to Georgia Southern. Uh, I think he's going to be fired up. Give me Georgia Southern to cover the three, even though my numbers don't say it. Uh, I, I like them minus, minus three and a half. Give me Georgia Southern minus three and a half. All right. We got three more games we're going to hit. So let's go on and do this. The first responder bowl is Memphis and Utah State. Utah State is a seven and a half point underdog here. The total sits at 61 and a half. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. It's on uh, Tuesday, December 27th at 2.15 p.m. Central Time. And we're going to pull it up on your screen. I've got Memphis favored by, huh, imagine that, right on the number, 7.92. And that's, uh, that's based on numbers over the last six weeks of the season from week eight on. The Utah State defense is pretty good at defending the pass. Number 38 PPA per pass allowed, number 20 passing success rate allowed. Memphis, that's what they do. They throw the ball, like 55% uh, of the time. Uh, they are number 60 in PPA per pass. They are number 16 in passing success rate. So Seth Hennigan uh, is their offense, just bottom line. Uh, Memphis, not great at running the ball. Number 70 PPA per rush. Well, Utah State, number 97 PPA per rush allowed. So that's, that would favor Memphis. Uh, Memphis, number 44 in rushing success rate. Utah State, number 100 in rushing allowed. Now, part of this could be based on the strength of schedule. Memphis is number 78 strength of schedule. Utah State, number 60. Uh, some of that has to do with the teams that they have played. Utah State obviously had to play against uh, Air Force, et cetera. So that's, that's going to hurt the numbers. But uh, Utah State did beat Air Force. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Looking on the other side of the ball, uh, Utah State's offense is not great. Uh, they're number 97 PPA per drive. Uh, Memphis's defense is number 75. PPA per drive. So it favors Memphis a little bit. Uh, I trust Memphis's offense more here. But man, that half point. Ugh, I do not like that. I do not like that. I, I don't know. I think Memphis wants to be here. Uh, Utah State. They, they played better towards the end of the season. But the numbers certainly wouldn't tell you that. Uh, Memphis number eight penalties per game. Uh, Utah State number 128 in penalties per game. Turnover margin, Memphis number 55. Utah State number 104. Points per play margin, Memphis number 55. Utah State number 104. There's too many things that point towards Memphis here. Um, I don't I don't necessarily like the matchups all that much, but I think that I would trust Memphis to be able to get this done more. So give me the Tigers to cover seven and a half here. All right, moving along. 
the Birmingham Bowl is Coastal Carolina against East Carolina. East Carolina, an eight-point favorite. Total sits at 63. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. It's on Tuesday, December 27th, 5.45 p.m. Central Time. So let's go on and, uh, and pull up some numbers. Let you see exactly what we're working with here. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Now, my numbers have loved Coastal Carolina all year long. All season. These are the numbers since week eight. And I've got Coastal favored by three and a half points. 3.57 to be exact. However, Coastal is number 106 in PPA margin. East Carolina, number 77. Neither team is very good on defense. Coastal, I don't know what they're going to be without Jamie Chadwell. Like, that, that seems like a big issue to me. Uh, you look at what Mike Houston has done in the past. If I'm not mistaken, he's 5-2-1 and one against the spread in the postseason. And that dates back to when he was at James Madison because East Carolina has not made a bowl game in a while. Uh, this is a this a big motivation game. Coastal Carolina has been to you know multiple bowl games in a row. Uh, they won a game last year against uh, Northern Illinois. So it's not like they're fighting to get their first bowl win or anything like that. East Carolina has not won a bowl game in a long time. This is a big spot for East Carolina because I think they are significantly better than Coastal Carolina. Uh, the defense. The numbers certainly wouldn't say that. East Carolina's defense has been putrid since week eight of the season. Number 124 PPA per drive. Coastal Carolina, uh, number 71 PPA per drive on offense. But Coastal Carolina's defense is pretty bad too. Number 105 in PPA per drive there. Uh, number 25 for East Carolina's offense. So how did we get to this point? What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at plays per game. Um, we're looking at all kinds of different things that that could point towards um huh we got construction going on in my building uh we've got a lot of things that could be pointing towards the fact that coastal would be favored in this game uh at least in my numbers i don't necessarily trust it because my numbers have uh, heavily outweighed coastal carolina especially lately with grace mccall being injured the jamie chadwell situation everything else like the numbers may not make total sense with that uh penalties per game east carolina is number four coastal carolina is number 55 turnover margin ecu is number 10 uh coastal is number 50 points per play margin is favoring ecu net points per drive favors ecu plays per game favors ecu um the biggest issue is defensive success rate is number 118 for ecu if coastal can take advantage of that then yeah you look at like standard downs PPA, Coastal number 33 on offense, uh, East Carolina number 104. If Coastal can stay ahead of the chains, uh, East Carolina may not get the ball very much. But when East Carolina does get the ball, Holton Aylers is awesome. Number 39 PPA per pass against Coastal Carolina number 120 PPA per pass on defense. Uh, passing success rate, same thing, number 57 against number 97. This is um, it's going to be interesting to see. Just interesting to see. I, I'm because of the Jamie Chadwell situation. I'm going to have to go with East Carolina. Give me the Pirates here. ECU minus eight. I know the number's big, but it, we've seen teams just kind of fall apart in bowl season when their coaches have gone. Um, you got some Coastal Carolina guys that are sitting out this game as well on defense and on offense. Guys that are transferring. I think East Carolina wants this one more. Give me ECU. Give me ECU minus the eight. I'm glad this came back down from the 13 and a half or whatever it got up to when uh, Grayson McCall announced, or I think it got up to 14 at one point. Uh, but it, at eight, under double digits, yeah, I'll take ECU. I'll take East Carolina there. The guaranteed rate bowl. That one is Wisconsin and Oklahoma State. And you talk about two teams that probably don't want to be there uh but both of them however really really good as of late in bowl games this is going to be jim leonard's last uh hurrah as head coach of wisconsin oklahoma state got a lot of guys out like a whole lot of dudes out spencer sanders is transferring uh i don't know if he's playing graham mertz is transferring i don't know if he's playing uh it's almost impossible 
to figure out exactly what's going to happen in this game. But uh, well, let's let's give you the numbers. Oklahoma State is a three and a half point underdog here. Total sits at 43. It's on Tuesday, December 27th at 9.15 p.m. Central Time. Again, I'm recording on Monday, December 19th because, well, I have to. A lot of traveling. Not going to be able to take the studio with me um, regardless. So let's, uh, let's pull this up. Let's look at the numbers. Since week eight of the season, it has Oklahoma State favored by nine or 9.9 sets, so 10 points. And that makes no sense to me. Uh, the The model has been a little little crazy during bowl season. I will go ahead and admit. Uh, Oklahoma State's defense, number 92 PPA per pass, number 78 PPA per rush. Uh, Wisconsin, number 64 PPA per rush. Uh, they run the ball 60% of the time. When they do throw it, they're not very good at it. Number 118 in PPA per pass. That's predicted points added per pass. Uh, PPA margin. Uh, Wisconsin is number 39, and Oklahoma State is number 120. So, how do we get here? How do we get to where Oklahoma State is actually favored in this game? Uh, that would have to be the plays per game that Oklahoma State runs, and if they can get Wisconsin out of their out of their game, which Wisconsin number 89 in plays per game uh, with 126, well, Oklahoma State plays like 152 plays per game or over that so they're probably closer to 153 if they can make wisconsin play faster than they want to well that is that's going to change up the way wisconsin plays that'll give oklahoma state more opportunities at more points and but this oklahoma state offense has been putrid number 112 ppa per pass uh the number 106 ppa per rush that wisconsin defense has actually been pretty good towards the end of the season here uh, number seven in PPA per rush, number 31 PPA per pass. Uh, Oklahoma State is number two in penalties per game. Wisconsin is number 92, something you don't typically see from Wisconsin. Uh, incredibly undisciplined. Turnover margin, uh, about the same. Number 79 for Oklahoma State, number 67 for, uh, for Wisconsin here. Points per play margin, Wisconsin, number 46, Oklahoma State, 84. That's, uh, that's since uh, week eight. No, 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 that's over the whole season. That's the whole season here. So, yeah, this uh, this becomes very interesting. Both teams significantly better on defense. Uh, Oklahoma State, number 36, defensive success rate. Wisconsin, number five. But Wisconsin's issue is they're number 47 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, that's something that, you know, if Spencer Sanders were to play, they could certainly take advantage of that. I don't have a good feel here about either side if i'm going based on motivation i think that these players want to win one for jim leonard on the way out i think that's the way that i'm gonna go that's that's the only thing that i can think of i know my numbers are way way off but man if you watched oklahoma state towards the end of the season uh, when they went up against a team that they could run the ball which i think that braylon allen and that bunch are going to be able to do um I'm, they they've just been putrid so give me wisconsin uh, Wisconsin to cover three and a half here, um, even with the interim coach. I, I think they, I think they like Jim Leonard. I think they want him to win one on the way out. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. All right, that is going to wrap things up. Going to turn that music down just a little bit. Check out Valtimary Surf Co. Gary Ten gets you ten percent off your order. Uh, check out Flow Sports. Twenty five thousand different sporting matches. Make sure and get signed up over there. Over there, uh, there's a link in the description for both of those, and of course, Bet US, America's premier online sportsbook, fifty dollars in free play, right there for you. Make sure that you go and check them out. Of course, there's a link in the description to make sure that you do that. There's no deposit required for that fifty dollar free play. All you have to do is sign up. So no deposit required. Again, I'm going to I'm going to keep bashing that. Uh Bet US College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday. That includes through the holidays. We are talking about all of the bowl games, every one of them. So go and check it out. There's a link in the description for that. Make sure you are subscribed over there. Subscribe here. Like this video. Share it out with your friends. Tell everybody about it. I am uh, I am pumped. I am absolutely pumped. I am excited about what's coming forward. We got some good things headed into the new year. So hopefully, hopefully you are going to stick around with us. With that said, it's time for us to get out of here. You guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully, hopefully all of your tickets cash this week.
Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.